Hello YouTubers and fellow hams. Well, this is my tutorial video on how to set the ICOM IC705 up under Linux. For a Linux laptop or a Raspberry Pi, what I cover here should apply to all of them. So let's uh, go to the computer and we'll talk about what we need to do. Okay, so I'm doing this under Debian Linux on my laptop, but everything I'm going to show you will apply to the Raspberry Pi, to Ubuntu, to just about any um, Debian-based Linux distribution that's out there, probably others as well. It's, it's very simple stuff. So, uh, first thing we want to do is we want to take a USB cable from the USB port on the radio and plug that into our computer. Now, what that's going to do is it's going to create a serial device and two audio devices. And I can see the serial device if I go to the file system and I look in the dev folder, which is uh, full of virtual files that represent all the hardware devices in our system. And if we scroll down on the TTYs here, we should see TTY ACM0 right there. That is the serial port for our 705. Now, if you have not connected anything to serial and, and, and gone through on this yet, you'll need to add yourself to the dial-out group. Unix and Linux, um, well, Linux has a carryover from the Unix days where serial port access needed to be secured. Way back in the days of mainframes, phone lines cost money, long distance calls cost money, so access to a serial port uh, was a privilege that had to be granted. So there's a security layer for that. In order for you to be able to access this serial port, you need to add yourself to a group called dial out. So we open a terminal and you can do that with control alt T and in that terminal we're going to type one simple command su do space add user space your username. I have demo in here because that's the username on this account but this would be your login username on your Linux system or your Raspberry Pi. Probably Pi if you're on a default Raspberry Pi um, by the way, everything is case sensitive in here, so these are all lowercase. If you used uppercase characters in your username, you would of course use them here. All right. So, sudo space add user space your username space dial out. Now, when I hit that, um, okay, it didn't ask me because I just did this command not too long ago, but it should ask you for your password because sudo super user do means do this command as root and it should ask you for your password which you then enter and what you should see is adding user your username to group dial out now that I've done that I will have access to that serial port um, before that will come to pass though I need to log out and log back in okay we're going to need to make a change on the 705. Now, the reason for this change. Um, every ICOM radio model has a thing called a CI-V address. It's a unique address that that model line radio uses when it's receiving commands for rig control, for remote control. Um, the big problem that we have with this radio is it's brand new. Support for it is not directly built into any of the software yet. Under Linux, we use Hamlib, and there is upstream support for the 705 in Hamlib, but we're not going to see that until it trickles down to the distributions probably in five or six months. However, this little radio uses a command um, set that is a superset of what the 7300 uses. So if we tell our software that this is a 7300, it'll work and you'll be able to do just about everything you need to do or want to do um, with rig control for this radio just by telling the software it's a 7300 but we need to get the radio to answer commands sent to a 7300 which will be at a different CI-V address so to do that we go into set and we go to uh, I think it's connectors 
And uh, down at the bottom, and there's a lot of stuff here, down at the bottom there's CI-V. If we select that, this top option is CI-V address. We select that and we see that it is set to A4, which is a hexadecimal number. That's what the H means, A4, H, H means hex. So it's set to A4. That is the default address for the ICOM 705. You'll want to make a note of that because we're going to change it and you will probably want to put this back down the road if your uh, software um, gains support for the 705. So uh, we need to change that to the address of the 7300, which is 94. So I will just change this to 94H. Now this radio will respond to commands uh, sent as if it was a 7300. So that's all we've got to do there. Oh, there was one other thing, actually. Set connectors, CIV, uh, CIV USB echo back. Uh, for most of the Linux software, you want that on. That just means that it echoes the commands that are sent to it back. Uh, that's how the software can tell that it's receiving commands. So if this is off, which I think it is by default, turn it on. And that's all we need to do on the radio. Now let's go to the computer. So now that we have set the radio to uh, the 7300's address and uh, we've got ourselves in the dial-up group, we can add uh, the radio to the software. So let's start with good old FL Rig, the uh, rig control software from the guys that did FL Digi. I like to use FL Rig for a very specific reason, and I'm going to talk about that in a moment as I show it to you with FL Digi. But here we are with FL Rig, and I am going to go to Config, and I'm going to go to Setup, and I'm going to select Transceiver. And here's our configuration dialog for the transceiver. Um, we want the rig to be IC7300. Uh, serial, we want to be ACM0, which is our serial device. 19200 baud, one stop bit. Echo is checked. And that should be all we need. And you can see here that 0x94 address for the 7300. Now we could have changed this here for the 705 um, and not had to change the radio, but not all software lets you do that. I don't think WSJTX lets you do that. So the better choice for now is probably just changing it on the radio. Once we've got all that set, I can hit init. And when I do, we should hear the radio uh, do a few things while FL Rig reads the configuration from it. There it goes. And then FL Rig is going to pop up and it should show us it does. It shows us what's on the radio. Now let me move this out of the way here and I'll put the radio up in your uh, screen here. And you'll see that the radio is changing as I change settings here in FL Rig. Let's go down to 20 meters, go to the popular frequency for PSK31. And I got the audio way down, but I can hear that there's activity. All right, so I've got FL Rig configured. As you can see, it's working just fine. Let's go ahead and launch FL Digi, which takes a moment to launch. But the reason I like to use FL Rig is it gives you so much control over pretty much everything you need to mess with on the radio. Um, everything from noise blanker to notches to the power output. You can change it all there. Okay, so here's FL Digi. Now, I'm going to go to Configure, Config Dialog, and a, we will go down here to Rig Control. At the top is FL Rig. So what I want to do is I want to check this little box here that says Enable FL Rig uh, with um, FL Digi as a client. All right, I'll hit Save on that, and then we'll go to Sound Card, Devices, and this is where we select our audio devices. And up here under port audio, which I've had the least trouble with, so I always use port audio in FL Digi. We want to set USB audio codec as our capture and playback device. If we look at the, the list, well, I don't see a lot in this case. I've got my internal audio devices here, but look for that thing that says USB audio codec. That's your 705. So we'll select those, we'll hit save, we'll hit close, and now FL Digi is working with our 705. And everything works. Um, 
Let me move off to an unused frequency here. Bring FL rig forward, and I'm going to drop my power way down. And I'm going to come back here, and I'm going to hit tune, and the radio should go into transmit, and my automatic antenna tuner should do its thing. Oh, and it didn't. You know why it didn't? Because I'm in USB mode up here. See this? USB. USB D for data. There we go. Now we're uh, in data mode. And what FL Digi did is it told FL Rig switch me to USB data. Okay, here's the reason, first off, why I like doing it this way. This filter selection over here. We have access to a filter range from, from 3.6 kilohertz all the way down to 50 hertz. And being able to control that from here is really nice. Well, if we're using FL Rig and we go back here to FL Digi, our filter is right here. So I can, uh, I can adjust the filter in real time. All right, let's go ahead and, and tune. There we go, I'm tuned. I probably should ID. Oops, control T. Control R. Okay. Now, the reason that I really like having that filter here, especially with this modern radio, is if I'm on a signal, um, like a weak signal I'm trying to decode. Okay, this guy over here is a little weak. I'm still going to get a good decode on him, but if there's another strong station booms in here, anywhere in this bandpass, that station is going to cause the automatic gain control on my radio to pull back and this weak station is going to be even weaker in the waterfall. But if I change the frequency to put this station in the middle of my filter's hot spot, all right, the center of the filter on the 705 is 1500. Let's go back to the configure dialog real quick. And under miscellaneous, where did I find that? Sweet spot, right here. Sweet spot. Here is where you can set the center frequency of the filters on your radio. And I've set them all to 1500, which is the center frequency on the 705. And the reason I do that is if I'm on a weak signal, okay, um, this guy, he's a little weak, and I hit this QSY button, FL Digi will tune the radio for me to put this station right on that sweet spot. So I'll hit QSY, and it shifted that weak station to 1500. Now I can come up here to my filter and I'll just use the mouse button or the mouse wheel to scroll up through the choices and narrow that filter down. And you'll see, you can see the waterfall narrowing as we're passing less and less energy through the IF chain. I'll narrow that right down to 50 hertz. And now literally the only thing coming through the IF section on the radio is that station. All of the other stations out here are no longer affecting my automatic gain control on the receiver. <laughs> We're just processing the energy from that guy, and I'm getting 100% copy from him, even though he was kind of weak. So that's, uh, that's why I like using FL Rig with FL Digi, just to have that filter control up here. I'll widen that back out. Oops, I changed my tuning. I'll widen that back out. So now the AGC is, is looking at the levels of all these other stations and you know it's all contributing to our, our gain on the front end. And uh, that guy looks a little weaker in the waterfall and indeed we started to drop some characters up here in the oops in the copy. So that's, uh, that's why I like to use that. Okay, so anyway, that's configuring FL Digi. Let's go ahead and uh, quit these programs. And let's go look at the other one that everybody's going to want to know about, WSJTX. Okay, here we are in WSJTX. And we'll go to File, Settings, and Radio. And we'll set our rig to ICOM 7300. And our serial port, uh, dev TTY ACM0, 19200 baud, 8 data bits, 1 stop bit. 
and I'll hit test cat, it should turn green. And it did. So WSJTX is talking to our radio. We also want to hit cat here for the push to talk method, so it will send a command to the radio to put it into push to talk. Audio. Um, every program looks at a different list, but what we really just want to look for is we want to look for ALSA. And uh, we want to look for that USB. Here's USB Burr Brown from TI USB Audio. That's the, uh, that's the audio interface chip in the 705. So what am I on here? Am I on capture? Input. Okay, input. So I want to go to ALSA input USB Burr Brown output. Scroll down here. ALSA output USB Burr Brown. And that should take care of our audio. And I'll hit OK. It reinitializes, and there we go. Now let's uh, go to, say, the 20 meter. And uh, mode will go J or FT8. And the radio, which is up here, you can see it's, it changed frequency. And it should start decoding stations. There we go. It's working. Okay, now one final note um, on levels. Levels are important on transmit especially. Over on the radio, I'm going to hit menu and I'm going to hit meter to show us all of our metering. And up here we've got ALC. That's the automatic uh, level control. When you're pushing audio too hard to the radio, that starts to go up as the ALC pulls the gain down on the uh, audio preamp before the modulator. We want to adjust the output level on the computer to where we just see one little square appearing in the ALC. Some people say, no ALC, no ALC. Well, if I go down to where I don't have any indication there, I could be too low and not know it. You know, I could be, I could be too low, not modulating very well, and, and this doesn't have a negative side to the meter, so I, I don't know how low I am once I get below that point. So I always bring the levels up until I'll just see one square or one little indication or just see that meter start to indicate. Then I know that I'm at optimal um, levels. So if I hit tune here, you know, let me put my operating frequency away from the, the pack. I don't want to bother anyone. And uh, I am putting out power. Oh, and I, oh, that's the mic. Wait a minute. Let's put the radio in USB data. All right, let's hit tune. Okay, that's not bad. Um, you can see I'm just getting a little bit of indication there. I could probably drop that down. So over on the computer, I'll go up here to sound preferences, output, and I'll select this PCM2901 audio codec, that's the USB audio. I'll select that, and then here's my volume control. And I'll adjust that, that's too much. I want to bring that up just a touch. Just until I start to see right there. Okay, there we go, just a, a one little bar on that ALC. That means that I am modulating uh, at 100% on the modulator, I'm pushing it as far as I want to push it. I'm not overdoing it. There's no distortion. My signal won't splatter. I'll get a good, clean, uh, modulated signal out of the radio. So you'll want to do that. You'll want to go up and, and check your volume control for the output of the, uh, the USB device and make sure that it is set for that ALC. Okay, that's basically it. Um, that's how you set up your software and the radio for running with Linux. So there you go. That's all you really need to do to get the uh, Ras or the Raspberry Pi, to get the ICOM 705 working with your ham software under Linux. So that's that. I guess we'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Also, if you're not already a subscriber, click to subscribe. Join us on the Facebook channel for discussion about the videos. And if you'd like to help support this channel, please click to support me on my Patreon page.